I don't really need a mic because there's plenty of you right down here in the front row and you can hear me just fine. I'm Nicholas Carroll and today we're going to be talking about well, death by USB. Why it's so important to consider what we do when we do something silly like pick a flash drive up off the ground or plug our cell phone into a public charging location at the airport or anything like that, right? USB is probably a very ubiquitous connector that most of you are very familiar with, but it's an untrustworthy connector. There's no real security of any kind built into a USB connection by default. It just is. When USB was being created, they wanted to create a very user-friendly connector, right? This is back when we had uh, serial and parallel and you had to go set the timings on everything for what you were doing. It was a very user unfriendly time for computing. So the USB group got together and they started talking about how they wanted to have a standard connector for all computers and they wanted it to be easy to use. If you uh, remember the Windows 95 days with the uh, plug and play compatible being the big thing in what, uh, 95, um, Series Pack 1, I think, about that time, like 1996-ish era, that was the big deal. They wanted to make it as easy as possible, right? But that means that anything you plug into your computer is inherently trusted. And whenever we inherently trust something, we can abuse it. Super fun. So we are going to look at a couple of attacks today, because you can't ever trust a USB stick. There's, there's a lot of USB-based attacks now, actually. It's uh, become a pretty popular thing. Um, this is a, style, a slide I stole from Leaping Computer uh, that just documents all the different USB attacks that there are. Some of the more famous ones include, uh, if you guys ever heard of Stuxnet in the news, that was passed by a USB to the Iranians, right? We have hardware keyloggers. I've done that to people where you just drop that on the back of the machine and some of them are Wi-Fi enabled now. You don't even have to come back and pick it up to retrieve what you wanted to get. Beautiful. Today though, we're going to look at two attacks in particular. Uh, one of them is the USB rubber ducky by Hack5. Uh, if you've ever seen the TV show Mr. Robot, I think they use it there. The other one we've got is known as the USB killer. And the USB killer does things a little bit differently. So the rubber ducky acts as a keyboard and injects commands for us. The USB killer just injects extra juice. So let's look at these real quick. I've got three flash drives up on the screen there, so you guys can see. The question is, which one of those is malicious? And I've got, I've got it right here. Which one's yeah, malicious? Assume they're all ours. They're pretty identical, right? Thanks for playing. Have a flash drive. How about you over here? <laughs> <laughs> Which of these flash drives is malicious? No idea. They're really similar, right? There you go. Have a flash drive. Thanks for playing. Right? Open it up and see. That's, yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good prize, right? You come to the guy who's talking about killing stuff with flash drives and he hands you a flash drive. That's not a good thing. Well, I lied. It's not one that's malicious. There's two that's malicious there. So up there, normal, is uh, this little guy right here, which looks identical to this little guy right there, which is our ducky. And the USB killer, uh, there's a couple different models. The one I have is a hair longer. I've got, unfortunately, not the standard sized one. Too bad. There you go. Those are almost identical, though. So if you were to pick that up off the ground, how would you know which one you picked up? You'd have to open it up, right? Or you could just plug it in, because we don't think about things, which would be a very bad idea. What if we, uh, what if, what if we uh, up the difficulty a little bit here, right? I've got a handful of flash drives. Which of those is malicious? Not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Which of those flash drives is malicious? Can you tell? They all have potential. None of those should be malicious. Those should all be safe because I would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, rubber duckies are like 50 bucks. I'm not just throwing them on the ground like that. So, 
Thank you for the free flash. <laughs> but on our uh, image up here, you know, we can actually see that there was a malicious one in the back there with the USB cord. So this is the rubber ducky, which is the one we're going to start with. Inside of the rubber ducky, so you guys can actually see it up there on the screen. It's a little bit easier for you to see. I'll just assemble mine right here too. There's actually a little microprocessor inside and a little SD card that controls and hangs our little payload in for whatever we want to inject. Okay? And now mine's being stubborn because I closed it. But that's it. You can see it up there on the uh, screen. That's what comes inside a rubber ducky. When you open uh, the rubber ducky case, and I believe there's a, a ducky on the door prize table, so one of you will be lucky enough to take one home. When you open up the case, it actually comes pre-disassembled for you, so that you can start writing and adding your payloads really easily. Duckies are a, a lot of fun. When you first get it, and you plug it into your computer, uh, what you're going to get is just a really basic, simple attack, and all it does is say, hello world, and that's it. But when you plug this in, your computer believes it to be a keyboard, because it is posing as a keyboard. It has all of the hallmarks in the way they manufactured it, so that your machine accepts it as a keyboard. So it automatically starts typing and injecting commands and doing whatever you want with it. They have a really fun and easy to use language with this. So if you're new to scripting or programming or you want to get into it and learn a little bit more, this is a great way to, to have something that you can actually physically hold and play with while you're learning to do that scripting. They use Ducky Script is what it's called, uh, but it's really easy to use and learn. They've got a whole GitHub for it. They also have uh, a, a, a ducktoolkit.com is the website where you can actually go and if you're not quite you're ready to write your own custom scripts, you can find ones that other people have put up there, as well as you can go up there and just take some off the shelf ones. Uh, there's a lot of really good ones on there. Um, password stealing, Wi-Fi uh, cracking, all kinds of stuff. That's the duck toolkit right there. So you'll have your plain language file that you write and read in. The actual payload needs to be encoded so that the microprocessor can understand it and process it. So make sure that if you actually play with this, that you do the encoding and you'll get a little in, uh, inject.bin file. That's what you actually put on here and that's what delivers the payload. Um, we'll show you one there. This is the default one that comes on. You can obviously see all it does is delay and it opens notepad and it says hello world. That's as simple as that scripting language gets. It's all right there in plain English for you. Okay? I have uh, something a little bit different, and I'm just going to let one run on the screen there for everybody to see. But I've got one already loaded on here. Uh, and it's just a little something. Who wants to try it? Come on up. Let's, uh, while that runs, plug this into uh, one of these computers. You can plug it into that one, or you can plug it in up there. Yeah, plug it in up there. Let's see if it works on the big screen. Just find a USB port and go. I know what's going to happen because I've never plugged these in while PowerPoint is running at the same time. <laughs> I assume it will try to activate. Oh, yeah, there it goes. It's uh, it did something. Hmm. Interesting. Oh. You're a hacker. Well, then, congratulations. You're now a hacker. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, wow. It's completely uh, hijacked this machine on this side. <laughs> Let me see if we can uh, make it a little bit easier on everybody down here. For those of you in the front row who can't see as well up there, I'll be plugging it down there too. Let's, uh, let's make sure this guy is on and awake. Yeah, all right, go ahead.
is where the massively wobbly table is. Well, that one runs for a minute. Uh, we'll try to do all kinds of stuff. There you go. So. <laughs> well, it did the first part and failed the second. That's funny. Didn't, doesn't like to play uh, nice with Chrome on this one. I'm assuming that that's something goofy that I did in the scripting. Because... Uh, Sometimes I'm just not that good. <laughs> but you guys get the idea there. These are fun. Like I said, I hope uh, whoever wins one of these in the door prize gets a good kick out of it. The other attack we're looking at today uh, is the USB killer, which is the one we're actually going to have some fun with here in a second. This is what the inside of the killer looks like. So you all can see. Uh, it's just a bunch of little capacitor banks. And the way this works is that you plug it in, it draws from the five volt feed going to that USB port, charges the capacitors, and then it discharges them all at once back through the data lanes. USB connections are not designed to take power over the data lanes, right? Those are supposed to be separate connections. Well, depending on how the internals of the system are grounded, you can have all kinds of weird results. Modern systems that are well built and well grounded they may survive the attack. You know, that's actually kind of a nice thing. I'm assuming that this old Dell here does not. Uh, but we do have a newer Lenovo netbook up there, which we're also gonna do, that I'm presenting on right now. So we can actually see the difference between something that's like 10 years old and something that's more like two or three, and see if there's actually a difference in the outcome. So that's the inside of this guy. Uh, we will show you real quick. And I'll let you guys gather around up front here. If you guys want to see, we'll see it up there on the screen too. The USB killer comes with a tester, uh, kind of like a USB condom, if you guys have ever seen those before, right? This is just one for the power lanes. So we will plug that in, and we will plug this in, and we'll give it a second. And we should make contact. Yeah, all right. So that gives you an idea of what it's going to do, all right? And we can do that over and over again. There we go. Ah, that one got me a little bit. <laughs> so if we plug that in without this guy, then we do the whole thing. Who wants to do it? We got two to do, so we'll get uh, one for each of you. Make sure she can see you. Just plug it in. Find a USB port and plug it in. Let's see what it does. Can we say a few words as a ride of a failure for a Oh, there it is. <laughs> well, I assume we can unplug it now. Oh, okay, and it's... Uh... Melted. Whoa, there's a little yeah. bit of smoke. Nice. That was pretty good. Good stuff. That was pretty good. We actually got smoke out of that one. That's fun. Uh, let's. It's still, still smoking. It's still smoking. Ah, she's done. Congrats, Oliver. You killed it. Well, I did good, right? That one. That is well done. Very nice. Smells special. Put that outside, real quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can smell that one. Let's try. Like I said, we're going to try something a little bit more modern. Uh, and I've got to unplug it from their projector. Because that's not... I know, leave it plugged in. That's, yeah, they're not going to be happy with us if we leave this plugged in and it does that. All right. So, we got to see one that was close to a decade old. This one's fairly recent. We'll see if there's a difference here. Be my guest. Oh. A lot 
Lava Spectacular. Better engineering. Still Yes, it did. So let's take that out. And let's see if she boots back up or not. Nope. Killed it. Still done. Toast. And think about how fast that was, right? If I wanted to come into your server room and interrupt your production network, all I have to do is get past your door, plug one of these in, and walk away 30 seconds later. And that is death by USB. All right. That was fun.